Hi guys and welcome back to Rad's Retreat the wood turning section of my YouTube channel okay in this video I thought we'd take a look at some of the uh, the many varied different calipers and measuring instruments that I use whilst I'm wood turning uh, I have actually got a lot more than this but uh, these are the main ones that I tend to use um, there are a, a couple more which I shall show you at the end of the video the item that I use probably the most as probably many of you will as well is the good old digital veneer caliper you know you can pick these up for next to nothing these days I think this one's accurate to one twentieth of a millimeter or something like that or is it one one hundredth of a millimeter yeah I think it is or one fiftieth it's very accurate anyway um, just pop it on watch the battery have run out oh actually it is that's why it's flashing look needs a new battery probably use that on every turning that I make not only does it do the outside it does the inside and it also works as a a good depth gauge as well very handy tool the uh, the little watch battery on average lasts for about two years so it's very economical and as I say I think this one when I bought it was about 25 or 30 pound uh, but you can pick them up now for less than 15 pound very very handy gadget every wood turning shop every wood turning workshop should have one of those in right you're probably a bit familiar with these type of measuring devices this is the bow tie one this one gets virtually no use whatsoever this is the one that gets most use actually that one this one um, the way it works is whatever oh come on this is not easy to do one handed whatever gap you put that into your into your hollow form and whatever gap you've got there is then replicated at that end so you can measure it there so if you've got a big gap you know really thick walls you would have a really thick measurement there can you see that's how it works that's the one that gets most of the of the use the bow tie one gets very 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 little use then we've got these you'll all be familiar with these no doubt the inside and outside calipers use these quite a lot uh, if you do buy some of these and you are intending to uh, using them for wood turning do yourself a favor round the you know the jaw ends round the jaws off with a file or some sort of abrasive um, so it's nice and rounded if you do offer these up to rotating work and they're not being rounded off you're in for a nasty surprise <laughs> so make sure you round them off this is the internal one you know use it quite often set it with a ruler and then uh, turn check turn check turn check until it's correct this thing you can see on the end doesn't get a great deal of use because 
it's for measuring threads it's it's a tool for uh, for thread cutting or thread chasing I should say which I've had a couple of goes at and um, how can I put this didn't to turn out as I expected or as I wanted I should say but uh, that's what that's for it uh, it tells you uh, how how uh, how thick to leave the wood so that you can then turn the uh, the thread into it right these inside and outside cal calipers are recently bought Oh, crikey, these, which are digital, that's the outside caliper, but it's also a digital one as well. So, as you open it up, close it down, it gives you the reading, a bit like the uh, veneer gauge does, the digital veneer gauge. Those were... Uh, I haven't had use of those particularly yet. I've used them a couple of times and they work pretty well. But uh, I tend to see myself going back to the old fashioned ones more than old, more than anything because you get used to using a certain tool, don't you? You know, you've been using it for years and you know how it works and you know how to set it correctly. And then when you get something new, you know, you're like, oh, what's going off here? But uh, I shall use them. I'm sure they'll come in handy. Right, I'll just show you one more thing that is not actually used whilst I'm wood turning par se. There's a posh word. These, my brother got me these great big, nasty, horrible dividing tools. Now, hang on, bear with me. Oh. What I use these for is when I get some wood given, uh, I will mark out blanks, different blank sizes. You know, I'll get a chunk of wood, let's say, and I will bang this roughly in the middle and I'll find the largest blank that I can cut with it. I will then use, because it's pointed, very much so, I will then scribe that blank size into the wood so that I can then use, I don't have a bandsaw because I ain't got room for it, but I will use that scribed line as a rough, you know, estimate for when I'm chainsawing, I can virtually get the blanks round by following that line with the chainsaw. You know, just going round, uh, just chopping little bits off until the blank, in, it's not perfectly round, but it's near enough there. There's not big corners on it anyway. And that's what I use them for. The really big monster, I mean, those things ain't going to, you could drop a hand, an anvil on those and they, won't bro they wouldn't break um, the monster ones. But they come in handy for that. You know, just for scribing into that wood. So that it gives you an idea of where to chainsaw to make a blank. Right, that's about it. I just thought I'd show you. I mean, I have got quite a few more things that I've collected over the years but these are the main ones that I do tend to use. That little black one on the end is basically same as this one but it's pretty much too small to use on just about anything other than miniature work. Right, we'll end this. Just thought I'd show you those guys. Take care in those workshops, watch those fingers and those eyes and take care of those lungs. They're very important. Without them, it's hard to live. Catch you later, guys. Bye-bye now. Take care.